and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, and welcome to St. John's Church on this beautiful third Sunday of Pentecost. Everything you need for worship is here in our bulletin. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is compassion, full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him.
Please be seated for our psalm. A reading from Psalm 77 to be read responsively by alternate verse. I will cry aloud to God. I will cry aloud and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out by night and did not tire. I refused to be comforted. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered. Your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led, by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as far as you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Oh man, these readings this morning are a little rough, despite the sort of anti-family bias that a lot of the gospel has, it's always a little startling. I think this part of the gospel where the folks who are thinking about following Jesus start making excuses, Jesus seems a little harsh, maybe. Um, But when I stepped back to think about it, I realized that we've all kind of had friends like this. Heck, maybe we've even been friends like this. The friend who says they'll be there for your big concert, or the friend who says he'll call you right back. The friend who knows the answer that you're hoping for, but who maybe doesn't always follow through. When the time for the show comes, she isn't there traffic or a babysitter that fell through. Or hours later, you call your friend back wondering what happened, and he says his boss came in and he got tied up. And maybe it's true. Often it is. Once or twice, these sorts of excuses make a lot of sense. We've all been there. There are times when I just can't manage to fulfill the hopes of even those people who are closest and most important to me. I bet you've been there as well. Perhaps you found yourself making excuses that seem very reasonable, but excuses that maybe might be less than the whole story. I think that's the implication here. There are so many things that can lead people to act this way. Conflict avoidance, chronic poor planning, and maybe a sense that it's more supportive to say yes and not follow through than it is to say no in the first place. A desire to be seen as the right type of person or just a difficulty in making decisions. But it's also true that eventually people show you who they really are through their actions. Whatever it is, Jesus doesn't seem to be fooled by what is happening by these excuses in today's gospel. The story picks up with Jesus being turned away from a simage because, quote, his face was set towards Jerusalem. It's a little confusing for us as modern readers, but the Samaritans, Jesus, the people in Jesus' time would have well known, were the descendants of the northern kingdom of Israel. And they worshiped God not in Jerusalem like the Jews did, like the Judeans did, but on a mountain in the West Bank called Mount Gerizim. And this is one of these situations where the tyranny of small differences means that they hate each other. (laughs) Jesus is rejected by this community. They won't see him because he's on his way towards Jerusalem, the place where they definitely do not worship. And Jesus, it seems like he's rejected because of the path he's following. And As it goes on, he has very little patience, it seems, for those who say, I want to follow, but. I want to follow, but. 
The excuses seem reasonable enough, bury a father, say goodbye to a family. The burial seems, I think to me, especially heartless until you realize that the Jewish burial practice at the time had the dead buried on the very same day that they died. So it's more likely that the man meant wait for his father to die or honor the one year anniversary of his death with a, with a fancy tomb as was arising in the sort of Greek tradition of the time. Regardless of whether the excuses are good or not, Jesus seems to doubt their commitment. And on some level, this maybe makes sense within the narrative itself, the broader narrative of the gospel when we zoom out from today's reading. If we look just back a few uh, chapters, Jesus has been thronged by people who will do anything to get to him. He's been forced to feed a crowd of thousands who come unprepared to hear him. He's been chased across a sea in a boat. He has been trying to find alone time and been surrounded by people. He's had people literally grabbing his clothing, hoping for a taste of his healing. People begging him to come to their homes. Please, please come. These people that we have seen in the chapters that precede have not hesitated for a moment to follow Jesus. And so it's maybe not so unreasonable to wonder what's going on with these people who say they want to follow, but also say that they have something else to do first. We know from our own lived experience that every yes implies a thousand no's. But these people, I think we're intended to see, want to have it both ways. The call that Jesus makes to those who follow him requires nothing less than a full and complete yes. Yes, but doesn't seem to cut it. And the radical love that Jesus calls forth from those who follow doesn't come by half measures. It may seem harsh to us, but later we'll hear the stories of the widow whose offering was only two small coins. And yet it was a full self offering of everything that she had. It seems from the gospel that Jesus doesn't ask more of his followers than they can give, but he does ask everything that they can give. And Jesus himself is prepared to offer his full self as well. I think this sense of full self-giving is what Paul is getting to in his letter to the Galatians when he talks about freedom. For freedom Christ has set us free, he begins. Freedom in Christ, freedom in the Christian faith, is the power to answer God's call with a full and complete yes, even when that yes may make no sense to those around you. Spiritual freedom allows us to move away from our broken human ways and to enter into God's ways. Because of our sort of negativity bias as human beings, we read this story from Galatians and recoil at the list of things that Paul describes as the ways that humans fail. And we could argue with each individual complaint, but the truth is that we know that we all do fail sometimes. So the idea that there are ways in which we fall short is no surprise. Freedom in Christ is a bit paradoxical though. It's not like a preemptive ex executive pardon for crimes not yet committed. It doesn't mean, I think Galatians is saying, it doesn't mean a freedom to be careless or a freedom to be cruel or a freedom to be selfish or freedom to take advantage of one another. This freedom in Christ that is offered to us is freedom to love your neighbor as yourself. Freedom to give your full self to God. Freedom to become inextricably bound to one another in community. Freedom to say yes to, things, to the things to which God calls us, even when they may not make sense to anyone around us. And freedom at the same time to say no. 
I have a spiritual director who has been uh, introducing me a little bit to Zen teachings. She's a 82 year old lay Catholic woman who ha was leading me through the, the Ignatian spiritual exercises. And one of the things that they teach in Zen is very reminiscent of this, which is a sense of non attachment. And non attachment and letting go of the things of this world can often lead you to radical places. And I think that this is part of what Jesus is saying when he says, forget about your family. But I do wonder what Jesus would have said if, if one of these men had said to him, instead of saying, but first I have to go bury my father, he said, Jesus, I will follow you by burying my father. Or if the other one had said, God has called me to return home and spread the good news to my family. After this passage, Jesus will gather the 70 and send them out to every village and town in Judea. They will prepare the way that Jesus is to follow through towns and villages like the Samaritan one that rejected him. And the followers of Jesus will ask people if they are willing to welcome Jesus into the, their midst. They will ask them for a yes or for a no. The call will be simple, but it won't always be easy. And so I wonder if there's anywhere in your life where you're trying to have it both ways. I know that sometimes I do. Places where I want to say yes, but don't really feel prepared to also say the accompanying no. I think the letter to Galatians and our gospel today are trying to tell us that this split way of living in the world is in fact the way of bondage. And that the way of freedom, the way of, excuse me, the way of Jesus invites us to make some hard decisions but it is also promised to us that it is the way of freedom. These readings this morning challenge us, I think, in some ways that um, I resonate with deeply. And yet at the same time, I think by wrestling with them, we can come to understand the call that Jesus is making in each of our lives just a little bit more deeply. So I pray that it is so with you. Amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Excuse me, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This morning we pray especially for those serving our nation overseas. For the nation of Haiti and in particular our partner school and church St. Matthias in Deland. And we pray for all those who are ill. Aster Chang, Chloe Clancy, Scott Clancy, Suzanne Cremens, Elisa Dean, Luke Demarest, Nancy Fowler, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzale, Ah, Vanessa Gulo, George Harstet, Karen Malloy, Johnson, Marie Lee, John Lamatola, Michael Manzalillo, Virginia Martinez, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Peter Puelco, Jarrett Pagano, Corey Phelan, Raphael Roper, Jack Santaniello, Joanne Schenk, Donna Lee Wieland, Connie, and Mary Elizabeth Brennan. And we pray for those who have died, Joan Small and Carolyn Ritter. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. <laughs> I've made some sort of mistake and I don't know what it is. <laughs> we give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name now and forever, amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Please be seated for just a few announcements. Excuse me for my lack of decorum during the prayers. There is something that we do here at St. John's and I'm not sure what it is that is a sort of house rules regarding the prayers and I, and I, I missed it. So I'll revisit with some of the folks who are like, I know what we missed <laughs> and we'll get it right next time. Um, I wanna welcome you all here this morning. I know it's a few the proud, the mighty crowd um, as school finished up this week, um, but it's just a delight to have you here. Um, after the service, um, and also those of you that are online, I'm delight to have you as well. Um, you will not, however, if you are online, be able to join us for Lemonade on the Lawn, um, but I hope those of you that are here in person will come and spend a few moments in fellowship with us out, um, just outside the door. Um, and I suppose you online, if you live close enough, you're welcome as well. Come on down. A um, couple of announcements. Um, one is that <clears throat> I have just been informed, or I was informed at 8 o'clock, that the annual Cold Spring Harbor 4th of July parade is on this year. It seems like maybe it didn't happen for a while, um, and that um, uh, this is one of those, like, we are the parade parades. Um, so you, everyone is invited to come um, join the community at 1015 on July 4th at the top of Snake Hill Road in Cold Spring Harbor. Um, and it's a community celebration and there is a surprise treat after the parade is over. Some of you that have been there before might know what the surprise treat is, but we'll keep it secret for those who don't know. Um, it's a really delightful kind of uh, lo low, low key vibe in the sense of just, you know, bring, bring your wagon and your dog and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, 
Those of you who follow our life here at St. John's Church know that um, our rector Gideon um, is up in New Hampshire with his family for the month of July. It's actually obviously not July, five weeks beginning today. Um, he uh, will be serving the summer church, um, I think it's Trinity Church in Dublin, New Hampshire. Um, and so we wish him a very restful vacation. While uh, the cat is gone, the mice will play. Um, and part of the play is going to be reading this book, um, Marianne Robinson's, Marilyn Robinson's Gilead. I hope many people will join me either following the 10 a.m. service or on Zoom on Mondays at noon. Um, there's two looks to the book, but the page numbers are the same. And I have some copies of this. So if you'd like one, you can, uh, they're, they're at the back. Um, and if you would like to make a $10 donation to defray the cost, that would also be welcome, um, but not necessary. Um, uh, Gilead is a beautiful book with many spiritual reflections that for a, a book that was published, I think in 2004, um, it seems very much of our moment. There's like pandemic and racism and stuff, but mostly it's the letter of a man to his son, a man who is a pastor to his son. Um, the bulletin is wrong. We're not meeting to talk about it today. We will begin um, talking about it um, in two weeks. Um, what else is there? Um, this week, uh, we invite you if uh, next week is blue bag Sunday. Um, so if you want to take a blue bag to fill with groceries and then return to the church, um, either next Sunday or sometime during the week, um, please do that. Um, any sort of non perishable goods are welcome. Um, and then I had one other thing. Yes? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, not Trinity. Yes, I knew it was Dublin. Yes, thank you. Thanks for checking. Um, I had one additional thing and what was it? Anyway. What, garden? Yes, garden. Um, garden team, anyone that has been helping with our garden fence, um, I would invite you to, we're, maybe we can check in um, for a few minutes. Um, hopefully, we're thinking maybe next Saturday, but we want to make sure that we've got the right people on board for that. I don't know why I'm, you know, what? it's the Haiti Fed. That's what it is. The Haiti Fed um, is rescheduled for July. It's a Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday from 6 to 8.30. What? Do you know what the day is? The 6th. Thank you. I should just have Anna do the announcements. <laughs> 6 to 8.30. Um, our ministry with uh, St. Matthias Church in Dayland has been a really wonderful uh, relationship for the parish. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to be there in a while, but we invite you to come and uh, celebrate that work with us um, on the 6th. Um, I think that's it. Um, ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And let us sing our final hymn, which is hymn 539, O Zion Haste.
Christ. Okay. 